Hi, I'm Ben Simon, Music Director of the San Francisco Chamber Orchestra, and I'd like to welcome you to a program of chamber music featuring trios by Mozart and Bruch. For this concert, I got to put down my baton and pick up my viola to join two wonderful colleagues, clarinetist David Howard and pianist Ian Scarf, to rehearse and perform together. The first work on our program, Mozart's trio for clarinet, viola, and piano, is one of several late works that Mozart wrote to include his friend Anton Stadler, an outstanding clarinet player and a fellow mason of Mozart's. Mozart himself played viola in the first performance of this trio, along with his friend and pupil, Francisca von Jacquin, to whom he dedicated this work. The trio has acquired the nickname Kegelstadt, or Skittles. Apparently, Mozart was engaged in a game of Skittles while composing it. Do you remember this great scene from the movie Amadeus? It's based on this playful rumor, as Mozart idly sends a pool ball down the table while penning his latest musical inspiration. A sunny, optimistic piece written for good friends, this trio has long been one of my favorite Mozart chamber works, and over the years, David and I have performed it many times. Filled with lovely melodies and deft part writing, its three movements, Andante, Minuet, and Allegretto, provide opportunities for each instrument to shine. It is chamber music at its very best, a true conversation among friends. And speaking of conversations, here's a short chat I recorded recently with our pianist Ian Scarf, following which we'll launch right into the Mozart Trio. So we're talking with Ian Scarf, the pianist in our recently named COVID Trio. We will rename that as soon as the pandemic's over. Yes, soon, please. <laughs> um, Ian, I met you through Hannah Adario Berry. Tell our San Francisco Chamber Orchestra audiences a little about you. Right. Well, I've been here in the San Francisco Bay Area since uh, 2006. I came here to do a graduate program at the San Francisco Conservatory, and I um, ended up staying for a postgraduate program, and then I ended up staying there as a staff accompanist and a piano coach. So. I've, uh, you know, hung around the Bay Area as, as, as musicians are wont to do. Um, since finishing at the conservatory, of course, I still work there occasionally, but most of my life is, a, is as a freelance pianist. So I do lots of chamber music and accompanying. I do occasional, you know, solo adventures, um, either as a soloist with orchestras or just recital series. Um, I'm also the founder and director of the Trinity Alps Chamber Music Festival. And I've, uh, you know, I've enjoyed all of my collaborations, but I think especially uh, the lately, the one, the one with you and David and, uh, and also, you know, before COVID, one of my last live concert projects was with the SFCO uh, when Hannah and Jeff Anderley and I played at the freight. That would have been uh, last February, oh, about a year ago, huh? That's so right. That's why I heard you for the first time, Ian. And I said, I've got to work with this guy. I really like his piano playing. Um, technically right. proficient, very musical. And I like what you do. Um, I've been following you a little bit. Um, you were the first person I've been Zooming with in a year that also has a Beethoven statue. <laughs> there and we go. I, and I know you like to talk about music. I've seen several of your presentations where you do a lot of what I do before SFCO programs where you talk about the music and you're you have the advantage of being a pianist so you can sit at the piano and, and play excerpts and I really have enjoyed that very much congratulations on all that that you're doing helping bring uh, make classical music a little more interesting and accessible to people who might not have the doctoral degrees thank you so we've been playing the Mozart Kegelstadt trio and four of these lovely little Bruch trios, pieces for clarinet, viola, and piano. 
Uh, have you played either of those before, Ian? Yeah, I've, I've played um, I've played all this music before. Uh, it's it's one of my favorite combinations actually to play, um, you know, with with clarinet and strings and piano because you really get such a mix of the different sounds of the different you know instruments and and they're each so unique and special on their own. But you know, in the hands of a great composer like like Mozart or Bruch, um, the 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 differences of sounds somehow manage to come together in a splendid way. So, you know, you have that kind of silky, reedy smoothness of the clarinet, and you have, um, in this case, the the richness of the viola. And then, of course, you know, you have the piano working away in the background. <laughs> yes. David and I have worked together for, we've known each other since college, and we've played the Kegelstadt many times over the years. But it was a pleasure to, to get some fresh ideas and to play it with you, Ian. We enjoyed, we enjoyed the experience very much, and we are about to show you the fruits of our labor. So here is the Kegelstadt Trio featuring Ian Scarf Piano, my good friend David Howard on clarinet, and I'm Ben Simon. I'll be your violist for this afternoon. Thanks, Ben. I love this piece. Enjoy.
was a German Romantic composer and contemporary of Johannes Brahms. Best known for his iconic violin concerto in G minor, Bruch actually wrote quite a bit of music, 
symphonies, operas, choral, and chamber music that has simply disappeared from the concert stage. Late in his life, well past the age of 70, Brooke developed a fondness for the combination of clarinet and viola, inspired perhaps by his son Max, who was beginning his career as a professional clarinet player. Brooke wrote two lovely works for this combination, a concerto for clarinet, viola, and orchestra, and eight pieces for clarinet, viola, and piano. For all my years of playing the viola and exploring various little-known corners of the repertoire, I had never played either of these works. So discovering these Brooke pieces with my friends David and Ian was a minor revelation. We chose four of these delightful miniatures to polish and perform, saving the other four for a future trio performance. These are elegant little works with lovely lyrical melodies, lush romantic harmonies, and a deft compositional touch that brings each of the three instruments together in various combinations of color and texture. I hope you enjoy listening to these works as much as we enjoyed playing them. But first, let's meet our clarinet player, my old friend and colleague, David Howard, who has been a member of the Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestra's woodwind section since he was just a wee lad. And then we'll perform for you half of Brooks' eight pieces for clarinet, viola, and piano. Enjoy. So I'm talking now with my old dear friend, David Howard, a clarinet player, um, that rare breed of clarinet player who both plays in tune and is musical. <laughs> and I, I would love to welcome David to our San Francisco Chamber Orchestra audiences. David and I went to college together and we played um, various times since then. We ended up in the Los Angeles Philharmonic. I was only there for a couple of years, but David has been there for a while as bass clarinet and possibly other things. Why don't you tell us a little about what you do with the LA Phil and your life and bring us up to speed on the last uh, 64 years, David. Well, you're, you're minus one, but I, I won't hold that against you. Okay. So, uh, you know, I've been in the orchestra. This is going on to my 40th year. Wow. And when you ask what I do there, you know, over those 40 years, I've managed to sit in every chair in the clarinet section. So, and that's four chairs, not all at the same time. So I've played a little first clarinet, second clarinet, E flat clarinet, bass clarinet, and if you want to look this up and see images, also contrabass clarinet, which by the sound of it, you would imagine would be rather large, which it is. So I've done a lot of different clarinet playing over the years, and it's so there's never a dull moment for me. So we've played the Mozart many times, but I know that at our advanced age, David, uh, this was the first time through. Speak for yourself, Ben. You just admitted you were 65. That's true. As am I. So the Brook was a, uh, that was a premier performance for both of us. Yes. It's, it's pretty amazing considering that clarinetists love to complain about the, the small repertoire that we enjoy. So it seems to be a contradiction in terms that we would, we would complain and then also not play a really great piece for, for that combination. So for whatever reason, it's just not happened. And, and I'm so grateful that we had a chance to play it together, finally. I agree, I agree. So there are eight pieces and we decided to play four of them. Yes. Um, not, to, not to get too long-winded, so to speak, about this. <laughs> um, so we played number one, two, four, and five, I, five and five six. Five and six, five and one, six. One, two, five, and six. And that means we have four more to do for our next recording session. Exactly. It's something to look forward to. They're beautiful yeah. pieces, aren't they? I think they're absolutely lovely. And as we have discussed, the two of us, they, Bruch obviously had affection for that combination. Not only did he write that trio, but he wrote a concerto for clarinet, viola, and orchestra, yes, which I also don't know. And maybe we'll find out about that someday. I don't know either. Do you, any, do you know any conductor who has access to a chamber orchestra, David? 
Let me think. I'll think on it. Okay. <laughs> so we're about to listen to the Bruch, these four movements from the eight pieces for clarinet, viola, and piano. And I know that I really enjoyed performing these. They're, they're beautiful. They should be better known. And we'll bring the other four to you at some point soon. Sounds fabulous. What a pleasure, Ben.
A shout out to the Medallia Company for their generous sponsorship of the San Francisco Chamber Orchestra this season.